Hey, what's up guys? Dave from Revocation here, hanging out at Guitar World headquarters. Today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about some different inversions, playing around with you know, some seven chords, whether it's the arpeggio or the, um, you know, the actual chords themselves, and how you can use them in more of like a heavier style of music, so you know, for hard rock or for heavy metal. So yeah, let's take a look at those. So uh, one chord sound that I really like a lot is the minor seven flat five sound. You can think of it just like a regular minor seven sound. So I was playing C minor seven. Also just a disclaimer, I'm tuned down half a step. So I'm just gonna call this C. So this would be the third fret on the A string, fifth fret on the D string, third fret on the G string, and then fourth fret on the B string. If I move this five down a half step, get that minor seven flat five sound, which is uh, much more tense than your regular minor seven chord, which is perfect for, uh, for heavy metal because you, know, you want to try and get some of those flat fives, dry tone sounds in there. But if I'm just looking at it just only from this inversion, I notice I have my, my root, my uh, flat five, my minor seventh, and my minor third. But I can rearrange these notes just going up using just basic inversions to come up with some different sounds. So it's all going to be playable over C. It's going to give you a C minor seven flat five sound, but just a, a different inversion of it. So for instance, this one, my first inversion, this would be root position. If I go to my, my first inversion. Now this chord definitely sounds different, but if I play C, definitely hear that it's still a C minor 7 flat 5 chord. And the thing with these inversions is you never know what sound's going to jump out at you. So for instance, in this first inversion, I have my, my minor 3rd here, my flat 7, my root, and then flat 5 on top. So the fact that that flat 5 is in the melody kind of creates a different vibe for the chord. And just by playing this inversion, you might hear some different sounds that you wouldn't have heard if you're just playing in the root position. You know, for instance, if I play like a riff like, uh, you know. You know, doing some different arpeggios, or arpeggiation of the chord, rather. With the trim picking. So you can go with all these different sounds just by playing with the chords. Same thing if I go up to my next inversion here. This would be my second inversion of C minor 7 flat 5. Here I'm starting on the flat 5 in the bass, then my root, then my minor 3rd, now my flat 7's on top. Right, again, it's a C. Minor seven flat five sound, but it's got a different characteristic because the notes are jumbled around a different way. And then finally, my last inversion will be starting on the seventh. So here are my flat seven, my minor third, my flat five, and my root on top. Learning those different inversions will allow you to come up with some different chord sounds, and you might be inspired by them. You know, even you know, throwing the whammy bar in there. Maybe the bass player is playing just C the whole time, and you know, it's going to be a C minor seven flat five sound. You know. Instead of just hanging on one chord the whole time, you can throw in these. Different chord uh, voicings to keep the listener engaged and interested in, uh, in what you're playing instead of just um, playing on the same chord the whole time.